Ooga, booga, ooga, booga. Hello, boogies. Many of you may not know this about me, but I have a second channel, separate from this one, where I talk about movies and television shows. There's been one persistent issue with film and television that I haven't talked about, but I probably should. Many of the films that are made nowadays are either a, a sequel, a remake, based on an existing IP. What I would like to do today is shine a light on a film that is none of those things. An animated film with a completely original concept called The Adventures of Panda Warrior. A hopeless panda learns martial arts in order to save the world? Where else are you ever gonna see a plot like that? Kung Fu Panda. I just remembered. Panda Warrior is different from Kung Fu Panda because not only are there humans in the Panda Warrior world, but there's also a savage war. The narrator comes on to begin the film to tell us about the bleak state of things. Rampant war, famine, suffering. My kind of movie. Crime and aggression became a way of life. And you can see how savage this war is by just taking one look at the battlefields. And I must warn you, they animated this and it's, it's pretty graphic. Take a look for yourself. Tragic. Look at all those busted wagons. That's when you know a battle was intense. A bunch of dead bodies and no broken wagons? You could even hardly call that a fight. Now that we understand the state of things, a world at war, the camera comes up and over the mountains and we find ourselves in a camp where the army's commander, a general guy, I don't, I don't know, I don't know military rank. He's fighting against four of his soldiers and holding his own. The camera continues to push in and we find our main character asleep just a few feet away. Oh, what? Main character, you say? But he's not a panda. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves, but I'll just say that you're right. He is not a panda. Yet. And it's probably a good thing that he's not going to be a, a human for much longer because uh, he has a, a prominent facial feature that uh, could use some changing, you know? I'm just saying like I, if I was getting into an argument with this guy I would be afraid because he would get heated and then I would be like hey Why don't you just take a deep breath and calm down and if he did that he might pop his lungs and die You guys ever hear a shop vac uh, it, like an industrial vacuum? That's what this guy sounds like when he breathes My first thought was to give the film some credits because they didn't reuse character models as much as like films with a low budget tend to do Here you have tall ones, wide ones, long ones, wide ones. Just a whole variety. Long ones? Now, they did save some budget by giving every single character only one facial expression. Yeah! <laughs> The general commanding, uh, lieutenant, officer, guy, he isn't pleased that Schnaz is sleeping during his training. They're at war after all. How dare you fall asleep when we're on the precipice of battle? No, I, I wasn't really sleeping. I was just closing my eyes so that I could gain more insight, you see. So the general tells Schnaz to spar with him. Schnaz warms up by doing a little dance, much to the delight of his fellow soldiers, only for the general to punch Schnaz so hard that he farts. <laughs> It's gonna be that kind of movie. Schnaz is not happy. He doesn't want to be at war. He wants to be at peace. And he's heard about this magical land his grandfather told him about. A place without war. A place where everyone gets along. A place called Maryland. And it's called Maryland. Maryland. A place that's merry. And Landy. As he's reflecting that night on getting his ass kicked and possibly sullying his underwear, the enemy attacks. A barrage of arrows rain down on the army's camp. And a bull chases Schnaz through a forest. And let me tell you, Schnaz, he might not be a fighter. But boy, is he a runner. And he is zooming. Zooming too fast. He runs straight off a cliff and falls into a body of water. And that body of water transports him to Maryland. Hey, is something wrong with your butt? I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Patrick, who are you? I'm sorry, did you say you were Patrick? And this story takes place in, uh, let me check, ancient China. I didn't know the name Patrick traced its roots back all the way to old China, but I guess you learn something new every day. Here in Maryland, we have enemy soldiers, dark and decaying forests. This isn't the Maryland that was promised to us. Now to understand how Maryland became this way, I need to fill you in on this, the, the backstory of this world. This is going to take some brain power, so I need you to strap in and focus, all right? Maryland is powered by a, quote, 
Dragon Ball of Light. And this Dragon Ball of Light is protected by two whales. The black whale one day begins absorbing the Dragon Ball. The whale, high on Dragon Ball power, starts destroying Maryland. In steps the legendary Panda Warrior, who appears and easily defeats the whale, earning a special necklace that he is gifted from the queen or the princess or somebody. <laughs> She's royalty of some sort. I, you do have to know. Now Patrick is currently wearing that necklace that his grandfather once received. That's because Patrick killed his grandfather for the necklace. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> His grandfather gave him that necklace, probably, and then died. It's never revealed, I just assume. That is not all you need to know about Maryland. That, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Strap in. Are you strapped? Strap yourself. Okay, so the, the black whale who's been defeated is injured. So in comes a rat from another dimension, and he uses dark magic to fuse himself with the whale. What do you get when you merge a whale with a mouse? A nine-headed snake, of course. He was too powerful for anyone to resist. Why does the mouse need to be from another dimension? Where did he learn dark arts? Questions that will never be answered. <laughs> the evil snake has the power of mind control, and he's been building an army to destroy Maryland. And that's this film's conflict. Miss Pig here is one of the warriors fighting against the snake, and she's the first person Patrick meets. Pig? Uh-huh, that's right. The two traverse into the dark forest looking to fight the snake to restore peace, but they come across a terrible enemy. What is that scary thing? That's a lot of teeth! One... Two. I guess two is a lot of teeth if you're Patrick. I'm also gonna ignore the fact that the spider growled like a lion. What is that scary thing? Because instead we need to focus on the sick kung fu. Ha! 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 Get him, pig! Get him! Oh! She's trapped in the spider's webbing, but it's too soon to panic. She's a trained martial artist. I'm sure she has some sort of trick up her sleeve, an ace in the hole, a trump card of some sort. What could it possibly be? Let's watch. Get out of here! This is it! Damn. I can't believe... I can't believe Kung Fu Panda was inspired by this movie. Huh. While on their journey, this duo intends to save the onion dogs from the evil tree man. I'm gonna apologize for that sentence. Yes, in this world, onions are dogs, and this evil tree shoots fire somehow. This film is so stupid. Patrick beats Tree Man by waterboarding him. <laughs> My kind of movie. Not waterboard. Uh, what's what's the phrase? Uh, dunking his head in water. Ah, uh, that sounds lame. He waterboarded him. This Tree Man got waterboarded. Much like the majority of the creatures in Maryland, Tree Man is actually possessed by the evil snake. The only way to undo the spell is for a magical tree root named Jimmy to come in and play his anti-brainwashing song. The dialogue is easily the best part of this movie. After Jimmy is done playing, Patrick comes up to him and he's like, Hey, why don't you just keep playing that song and we'll just go around unbrainwashing everybody. And Jimmy tells him he's too tired. Like it takes a lot out of him to play the song. And then Patrick says this. Could you free the entire phantom army too? I always need time to rest after I perform the song of peace. I need time to recover. Well, that's weird, but I understand. That's weird? That That's not weird. In fact, of all the things that happen in this movie, that is the most sensical thing. It's fully explained and yet Patrick is like, <laughs> wait a second. You get exhausted after using your magical abilities? I don't get it. That makes none sense to my brain. I'll accept it because I trust you, but me no understandy. Homie, you transformed into a fucking panda bear. Your pig friend farted a giant spider to death. And this is what you're confused about? Well, that's weird, but I understand. The strongest boss, apart from the, the nine-headed snake, ends up being this gay bull. Now, I, I, I can't say for certain he's gay, but I mean, shirtless overalls, the septum nose ring, dyed hair, and brows? The exo nipples? And let me tell you, bro is a beast. He, well, yeah, he's literally a beast. He's a bull. He's so strong. Like a bunch of animals just come in out of nowhere to start fighting him. And they, trust me, like, you're like, oh, who are these animals? There is no preamble. There is no setup. They've never been mentioned, but they're here to fight him now. And they just start beating him, but he doesn't take a single HP of damage. And they literally shoot a rocket at him. 
doesn't leave a scratch. They manage to escape and they go to meet the ruler of these lands, King Leo. Leo is the wise elder who's going to listen to the main character's problems and doubts and he's gonna fill them with reassurances. Some of the things King Leo said in this movie are gonna stick with me for years. They're so profound. Here's one of them, for example. Don't you know there's no one in the world who can look down upon you than yourself? Wow, just chills. It's so wise that it hardly makes any sense to me. Don't you know there's no one in the world who can look down upon you than yourself? Wow. It's almost as if the voice actor flubbed his line and then nobody noticed. And that's a great lesson I took away from this movie. You don't need attention to detail to be a good director. You just need banger songs. <laughs> Patrick goes through a quick training arc until it's finally the day to depart for their perilous fight. This is actually one of my two favorite moments in the entire film. See, Tree Man, he doesn't believe in Patrick. He's seen how inept Patrick is. And he's rightfully cynical. He doesn't know that, that Patrick is going to be able to save this entire world, but he's going to give Patrick the opportunity to prove himself. So he challenges Patrick to a duel. And if Patrick wins, it'll show everybody that he's ready to fight the big bad boss. I challenge him to be the leader! So Tree Man is like, hey, you and me, let's duel it out right now. And Patrick declines. What if I lose or get hurt or something? What if I lose or get hurt or something, dog? <laughs> Tree Man is like, I don't trust you. I don't trust your abilities. None of us have seen you fight anybody and win. So prove that you can fight now. And Patrick is like, no, thank you. <laughs> and then Tree says, well, all right, let's get going then. Why don't we stay? Why are we waiting around here for Let's get going. <laughs> he just moves on. What if I get hurt? Homie, first of all, you just participated in like a deadly training exercise. Many of them. You're afraid to get hurt now or worse. Lose? If you lose against Tree Man, what chance do you think you have against the Rat Whale combo? In order to fight the villain, they first need to find him. The snake has a floating fortress. Tree Man believes his master is gonna be of some help. My master, the Fox Elder, is a magician. She might be able to help us out. So he and Patrick head to her lair, where she gives them a rock that will guide them to the floating fortress, and then she also gives them a note, while telling them to only open that note should they find themselves in dire circumstances. Open it if you should ever find yourself in terrible danger. That is very important. I want you to remember that. They should only open this if they are in desperate need. You are never gonna believe what this note says. The two return from her lair, but they can't find their allies until the goat grabs Patrick's leg. She's injured and she's struggling to get up and she is their ally. So Tree Man decides to help by going around her and beating the shit out of her. Are you all right? Everything okay? <laughs> I'm fine. The other allies at this point, they've been captured and brainwashed already. Goat mm. is the only one that got away. But they do manage to find the floating fortress. Only one problem remains. How are they gonna get up there? Do they A. Fart their way up by using the gas to propel them. B. Use a device that was previously set up that conveniently comes in handy. Or C. The goat pulls off one of her horns unfurls it to reveal that it's actually thousands of feet long and then whips it into the sky when it somehow latches onto a ledge on the floating castle and then they manage to climb up those thousands of feet. Which one do you think it is? What's your answer? This is, uh, C. It was C. Can't a girl have a few beauty secrets? Miss Pig is the first alley they find, and she's clearly under my control. She begins attacking them, so Tree Man shoots a flame at her, hitting her and knocking her out of the sky. Now, they don't want to hurt her, so they rush to think of a way to save her from falling and hitting the ground really hard. Now, the goat is a quick thinker. She unfurls her extendo horn and then throws it, where it wraps around Miss Pig comfortably. And then the goat yanks on the horn and slams the pig to the ground. <laughs> she lands safely. That's the equivalent of being like, oh, I think, oh, I think there's a mosquito on your face. Ah, oh, hold on, I got it. After Pig has been smashed into the ground, Patrick runs over to kick her in the ass so hard that a fart comes out of her eyes and ears and mouth. Jimmy at this point, he's rested. He's He can play his song again, so he comes and he undoes all of the mind control on all the animal friends. How does he do it? I must resist. Oh, yes. And we're finally to it. The final conflict. The gang against the nine-headed evil rat whale snake thing. 
that knows my control, but also has a bunch of other abilities that haven't been explored much. <laughs> this snake is no joke. It is kicking their asses. And that's when the note comes in handy. Tree Man's master gave them this note specifically for this moment. And after reading the notes, Tree Man knows exactly what to do. His whole body goes ablaze as he casts fireballs that consume the snake. See that? That's how you do it! Exhausted from the fight and believing that the snake is defeated, the rest of the game continues on, allowing Tree Man to finish off whatever is left of the snake. They did manage to find the note though, that Tree Man's master gave him, and they read what it says. So what does it say? We must sacrifice one for the sake of all. Oh, I, I do want to tell you, Tree Man is dead. He's dead. He's not coming back either. Full dead. He burned himself up to try to take the snake down. He did not succeed. The snake is still alive. And now, Tree Man is just dead. When you're watching a children's movie and someone's master gives them a note saying, use this in a time of need, usually it's an item that inspires great hope and gives belief to the character that they can persevere whatever challenge is ahead of them. Not a note that says, hey, in your time of need, kill yourself. <laughs> we must sacrifice one for the sake of all. Crazy, I'm still not over that. But that's my favorite moment of the entire movie. That master is sadistic. Imagine training a pupil and then when they need your help the most, you're like, hey, just go die. And the tree man didn't even succeed. The snake is still alive. Also to give them the instruction to not open it unless you're in need. Why would you do that? Why would you not tell them ahead of time? Like, hey, I think you're gonna be in danger and someone's gonna have to sacrifice themselves. Like what, what? how is it gonna help me? When I'm like, oh, I think I need a, a boost. What is my master telling me to do? Really? Like why, learning that in that moment? How is that helpful in any way? Wouldn't it be better to know days before the battle begins? Listen carefully. Today you're going to die. Apparently the snake is weak to sunlight. So when the sun is out, they fight the snake and the snake gets all tangled up. And apparently the, the necklace that Patrick's grandfather gave Patrick, he's also a bomb because Patrick throws it at the snake and it explodes. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. Bye bye. Now that the big bad evil is defeated, what do Patrick and the gang do? What any person would do after saving the world. They dance. The credits roll and we see Patrick fighting the Lieutenant Ca uh, Captain uh, army leader guy. Did, did, I assume Patrick went back to the world then. Is that what that's alluding to? I don't know. I, I don't know why he didn't stay in Maryland. He wanted to be in Maryland the whole time. Why didn't he just stay? I was also alerted to a, another Kung Fu Panda ripoff called the Little Panda Fighter. <laughs> Guys, 78 minutes of the adventures of Panda Warrior was too much. I couldn't invest another 50 minutes. Well, that's weird, but I understand. So I skipped around and apparently this is a story about a panda who loves to dance. But his boss runs a fight club. Oh, somebody get him off of me! And there's this undefeated fighter at the club who's hurting interests and the betting market because he just keeps winning. He wants to watch a fight when there's just one dominant fighter who's always gonna win. So through some trickery, the, the boss of the club manages to convince everybody that Panda is actually this world-class fighter. He's very talented. He's just been keeping it a secret. And in the climactic battle scene against this really talented fighter that's been ruining business and the underdog Panda, the two fights and Panda loses. But only one can win, Panda Punk. No. <laughs> and that's that's the end of the film. Uh, he loses, but the boss is happy. After convincing everyone that the panda is a good fighter, he bet against Panda. And so he, he won a bunch of money for himself. He takes his earnings and then he retires and leaves the club to Panda, who turns that fight club into a dance club. So I guess everyone gets a happy ending, kind of. Oh, actually, it looks like Danny Gonzalez has a video about this movie. But I guess I kind of stole his thunder talking about the little panda fighter. If you want to know more about it, I watch his video. I'm not going to feel bad, though, for already recapping it. Like, oh, I stole his video. The man stole my entire background. Have you seen his new video? Stop. Stole. The panels. The couch. It's the same. That couch is the same exact couch. Oh, he got it in brown and I got it in black. I could have gotten it in brown, but I, when I bought it years ago, I was like, I think black will look better. But then I realized whenever I wore a black shirt with the black couch in the background, I just kind of look like a floating head. So I, he probably made the right decision there. If he gets a Julius, 
I'm gonna sue. That's the only thing I got going for me. I'm the statue guy. I hope you enjoyed this look into Panda Warrior. It's a, it's a little bit of a goofy movie. I could never cover this for like a real commentary. But I enjoy, uh, I enjoy watching this movie and doing a little goofy recap. We'll see how you guys feel about this kind of video. And uh, I hope to do something like this in the future. For movies that I'll never do a commentary for, this could be a nice alternative. Thanks for watching, buggies. Bye-bye. See you later. Come back soon. To the to, to bye. Not toodles. That's the other channel. Which is bye-bye.